here we are. Hopefully we'll get this knocked out today, inshallah. This is gonna be a beam replacement. Got the replacement beam sitting there. You see the fracture in the in the main beam there. So we gotta jack the boat up, get it off that beam, swap that one out, drill new holes because this one has two holes in it and that one has one. The plan of attack is going to be raise this trailer jack all the way up as high as it can go, get the boat up and then loosen the winch, let it slide back a little bit, put the jack up under it, lower the trailer jack down, put a bar across it to support in case it falls. And then once the weight is off, disconnect the beam. That's the plan. And we'll lower it back down onto the truck to keep it from rolling. Now, it's not rolling anywhere. Okay, now it's time to begin the lift. I've loosened the safety. I kept the, the safety chain on it, but I've loosened this, the winch. This is gonna be my lock. You know, once I get the boat up, slide that up under it on top of the frame rails. Got my jack so it can slide down, slide across as the jack goes up. It can slide across these four by fours. And what I want to do is just lift it a little right here and then lower the trailer. And hopefully when I lower the trailer, then inshallah the boat will stay up. Trailer will come down and all that weight will come off that beam. That's the so far so good uh this has gotten loose now though and the boat is not coming the more i let that down the trailer is not coming down because it's still attached to the boat i had to loosen this winch again so now i got some more slack in it because it tightened up but now the boat can't slide back anymore because of the strap in the back so i need to loosen this strap back here and let the boat slide back some more at some point though it's going to get rear heavy i don't want it to tilt all the way down so that's the risk right now we'll see all right i got it hitched to the truck now so to prevent it from tipping all the way up and the skeg hitting the ground but it's not when i jack up the, tr the boat it's not leaving the trailer behind and that's what i really wanted so I gotta, let me jack it some more and see if, I already got that green strap loose and this is still loose, I suppose. Yeah, that's still loose. So let me just be a little bit more aggressive with my jacking, see what happens. All right, I finally got a little bit of daylight on that lock and got this tight. So let me loosen that. It was starting to get tight. Let me loosen that, give me some more slack, see what happens. All right, so it's lifting, but you can see it's going sideways with the jack. Instead of the jack rolling on those four by four posts I put down, the jack is moving the boat as it goes up with the angle of the jack. So over here, these wheels are all off. They're off the boat, but the higher I go, the more the boat rests on these wheels, these rollers. So if I go up any further, I mean, they're, they're moving, but it would be impossible for me to put the new one back on. And this might be what's keeping, I think I'm gonna have my buddy with his truck come hitch to the winch point here and pull the boat back that way yeah let me get that further up under there right, i think what i'm gonna have to do lower it test this out it's just on an edge lower the jack reposition it so the jack is long ways under the center parallel with the center of the keel so when it goes up, but then when it goes up, it's gonna pull it forward because of the angle of the jack. Don't want that. But if it goes up higher, 
I'm, I'm 45 minutes from the water, so I can't just run down to the water and put it in the water while I do this swap. Plus, I'd have to run on the road with that beam like that. I think it's a lost cause, y'all. I'm gonna have to go buy some cinder blocks and block it. Put the rear, put that transom, put the stern on, uh, on blocks. Jack it up, put it on blocks at the stern. Pull the trailer forward and let the keel, the front of the keel, rest on the rear rollers. That's gonna be the only way. Because the only, like if I put that jack on the center of the boat, then I have to be up under it, jacking. And if I, I ain't, I ain't getting up under it, you know, because it's already bowing that four by, I got it resting on the four by four post right now and it cut right into it and it's bowing. Uh, so I think this is a good safety measure, but I wouldn't want to trust it with my life. Uh, so yeah, let me run on to the store buy how many I got to go measure the height of the ground back here so I can jack it up back here put blocks under this both sides and then just pull the pull the trailer forward I I got it I got the rear end lifted but now all the weight is on the damaged ones and I was thinking I go to the Home Depot give me some blocks block it up at the raised height and then pull forward but if i pull the trailer forward from a raised height in the back all the weight right now is here and as i pull the boat the trailer forward those rollers would have to lift the trailer as it comes forward and i think it will end up pulling it and there's nothing here securing it this way so i think i'm gonna have to lower it back and just put it on the blocks maybe even let the blocks be a little lower then the trailer so that as I pull forward it'll come off and rest on the blocks because the blocks only have compressive strength they don't have side to side strength so I need to set the boat down on the blocks that's why I was trying to raise it so I could set it down on the block and then pull forward but as I pull forward I think those rollers would try to the friction would pull the boat off the blocks in the back so let me lower it down and go through the science in my head again. All right, now we're back. Got the truck hitched back up. Went to Home Depot, got some blocks. Now I got the blocks stacked up back here. I got a couple of ground anchors. I'm gonna try to put these in the ground. Hopefully it'll provide enough force to pull the boat back when I pull the trailer forward. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and put this together, see what happens. And try to lift the boat a little bit to get it to set down on these blocks. All right. I got the one anchor in, so now I'm over here trying to do the next one. I'm just using the jack, the jack handle to wind it down. Oh, well, I can't do it one hand, but I'm using that the jack handle for leverage to crank it down into the ground. That one's fully down. I'm gonna put this in here and then ratchet it down. That should be enough to hold the boat, I hope. And this, folks, is the moment of truth. I have the boat anchored down here. I have the those blocks up under it. Now I want to pull the truck forward. Once I take some slack and pull it a little bit at a time, of course, but put some slack into this winch line and then just start pulling it forward. Let's go. Just when I was going to pull the truck forward, the bilge pump kicked on and the two side vents put out a whole lot of water. I was like, you know what, let me pull that plug. I'd had an oil leak earlier. That's going to be in another video. 
and so it ha had oil in my build, so I, I kept the plug in because I didn't want to leak oil all over the... Damn. That's a lot of water was in this boat. I didn't want to leak oil onto the ground, so I, I left the plug in over this last week and we had a ton of rain. This thing is, it's been going for a while. I said, let me pick up my phone and just record it. So I picked the phone up and this is it's still going on. Jeez, it's a lot of water that rained in there. Never leave your plug in, you know, while you're on land. Always take your plug out. And this crap. Well, the bilge pumps have come on, I'm sure. But, dang. Now the oily stuff started coming out and I don't want it to leak onto my friend's yard, so. I'm trying to catch it. All the oily crap. That's from the oil leak and the water's mixed in. You know, oil and water don't mix, so the oil set on top. I'm using that big four by four post as a wheel stop to let me know, inshallah, this is successful. So when I pull forward, I want to know when to stop when I'm coming back. So I put that there to let me know when to stop. All right, my heart's beating so fast. I want to see if this is going to Well, work. it didn't work at all. It was a mighty big fail. I moved that much. No slack. I mean, zero slack. The boat didn't move at all off the rollers. This brick stack survived. It pulled my ground anchors up. They aren't doing anything anymore. And this brick stack collapsed. So, let me put this thing in reverse. First, I'll knock out that four by four post. I have a hockey puck, which is just vulcanized rubber under there. So it's, it's tight. Uh, but just put it in reverse and get rid of that. All right, back to the well, drawing When board. I put it in reverse, I hit that, that four by four post and it slammed. And then that I guess that jerked the boat loose. So now we have tension. I'm going to see if I can unroll it. Will it stay? I straightened the... When I came back in reverse, the stack went back vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and try to unroll it, see what happens. Okay, guys, that was a spectacular fail all the way around. Now, this is so tight, I can't even use the winch to roll it back up. When it's floating in the water, yeah, you can roll it up on an incline. But when the whole, when the weight of the whole boat is on the the rollers and you're, and you're, I'm on an incline with the boat, you know, headed downhill. So I'm gonna have to move the truck onto the other side of this hill and let gravity roll the boat back down the rollers i can't even like what i want to do is loosen it so that i can let it roll onto the the blocks but it's so tight i can't even get it to back off and i'm scared if i let it back off if i force it that thing might let go and then roll all the way off the trailer and without me being able to stop it so I'm going to have to pay somebody to do this or I have to chance it driving all the way to the water and putting it in the water. Then it's an easy swap, but that's a I, that's a hard chance. But the shop is about 10 minutes away, so I think I'll try to drive 10 minutes on Monday. Let me go ahead and park this, put this on a heel and see if I can't roll it back up. I'm back trying to lift it, y'all. As I, I got the I got it down on the downhill slope. And it did roll forward. It was easy for me to crank it. And I just, but it had gotten even lower. The crack has gotten even worse. So now it's even lower to the ground. I don't think transport is feasible. So now there's no choice. Got to figure it out. So I figured if one jack was bringing it to one side, two jacks could center it back up. Just got to try. All right. I reached as far as I could go with that jack, with the two jack thing. Now I got the one jack up on stilts. And hopefully I can get some height off of this. But I'm lifting the whole trailer up. And I haven't figured out how and why I'm lifting the whole trailer. Uh, but 
for right now i'm lifting the whole trailer this is my I, I took a break i had to go pray i'm muslim so i prayed zur and now i've come back and hopefully the prayer will help <laughs> well if our experiment was to see if prayer helps i think it was successful <laughs> i'm off i'm off the rollers off the rollers I have my safety post here. Um, that's pretty sketchy, but with my safety post there, should be fine, inshallah. Let's go ahead and get this right, thing started. Here's what I have for safety precautions. Got this big post going all the way across, and I've already demonstrated that it can support the weight. I got the jack still supporting it. I put this rope here uh, this this ratchet strap across the beam across the frame rails to keep the frame rails from bowing out it should also protect a little bit if the boat were to fall that strap it would stretch some but it wouldn't stretch it wouldn't let it touch the ground and then i have a jack stand to catch all right so now i gotta disconnect this brake hose and then unbolt these I thought about this for a hot minute. Once I take these, uh, this bolt out here that's supporting this, uh, that bar, that beam is gonna be heavy with those rollers. I'm gonna just drop it with the rollers, take a measurement to locate the rollers uh, on the new beam. And then I'll, inshallah, I'll mount the new beam. And once the new beam is mounted, then I'll add the rollers to it because trying to put those rollers with the beam on at the same time, even though it'd be easier to assemble out here, it would be really heavy. And since the beam, these rollers, they go on like that, I can let them sit while I'm tightening it. It's my hope. All right, let's go. One nut off. Now we can go try the other one. We will not, I gotta put a jack up under that beam so that I can take the pressure off it. It's binding, I can't get the bolt to slide out. Get that bind out of it and then go from there. I have I have both sides loose now, but this thing is heavy, heavy. With all them rollers on it. I'm gonna try to take these U-bolts -bolt, U out. It's loose, I just have it sitting now on the jack. Uh, but I'm looking at it and I don't think I can pull it out from under the trailer beam with those rollers attached, so. Go ahead and try to do that right now. Two of the U joints came out easily. You bolt joint, uh, you you bolt nuts, but those two are not coming, not budging. I'm just gonna cut them. I gotta get the generator, get the extension cord, get the cut off wheel, all that stuff. Here's what the old beam looked like. Yeah, that that was always waiting to happen. It's all hollowed out. Now we gotta put the new one on. These rollers are heavy. That beam that holds them things on, oh my goodness. I did not know it was that solid, but it would have to be, right, to hold the weight of the boat. All right, we're gonna put this other one on it. This one, wow, it had another hole growing right there. This one only has a hanger like that and one bolt. The new one, the new one has two holes. So I'm gonna put one of the bolts from the old hole in one of these, and then come back, do it on both sides, and then come and drill a hole for the new hole, new bolt. All right, now, oh, ouch, hit my head. Now I have this bolt just sitting in here for right now, because I need to drill a hole for this one. I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking what I have to do is drill, is tighten these up so I can get this to line up like it really will in real life. And then I need to put the hole through here if I can get it without the drill hitting the beam. So let me go ahead and try that. If not, I have to pilot a hole and then take these back off. All right, I, I got to a good Point here I got this thing almost tight uh, I was ready to drill this hole 
and I forgot my drill. I got this little thing. That's a fini finishing bit, but I need to start, you know, a tiny hole, then a bigger hole, then a slightly bigger hole, then a bigger hole to cut through this galvanized. Going big, all of a sudden, just ain't getting it. I forgot my drill. So now I got to, I don't, I got to ask somebody, I got to ask my neighbor if I can use his drill because yeah, I'm going to need a drill. I should have bought bits to fit that, but that's the only bit I have. I have plenty of bits to fit a cord drill, but not any for the cordless. Boy, it was so going so well. Like even right now, I'm thinking with these rollers, once that bar is in, once the beam is in place, I think I just lift the rollers up and slide them down uh, to where they're gonna be. And then put the U-bolts through them. I think that beam will do support all everything. And yeah, I think it won't, it won't be as hard as I thought. Those things are super, super heavy though. I'm just waiting on uh, my buddy to get here with the drill. So I'm just gonna, he said he should be here in 15 minutes. But now the sky is looking a little gray. Hope it doesn't rain, cause I don't want rain to get on my generator. I have to shut it off. Cry, cry, cry me a river. This is the, that's a mess. Vegas can't be choosers. So I'm using this, but the, and the chuck is messed up. So I gotta use vice grips to tighten it. And my drill bits come to find out they're worn out. We were at Home Depot yesterday and my wife was like, go ahead and just buy some extra half inch bits. And if you don't need them, you just bring them back. I was like, no, I already got some, so I don't need it. If I had just bought them, now I'm sitting here and I just can't get through this. I can't get the holes to finish. I got the holes, I stepped up to half inch and right now I'm at 6 sixteenths and I just can't get to the half inch. It's just sitting there and spinning and not really moving because the drills, the, the bits are all worn out. I got these both, the holes through, new dr drill bit, bang those bolts through, both sides. Got this just hand tighten on uh, those U-bolts. Putting these U-bolts on, trying to get it lined up. Got that one close to the keel. Uh, and then this one, we can't get it close to the keel, but we measured off from the frame to where this one needs to sit, just like the old one. So now we're getting ready to put some bolts in it just to hold it here so we can lower it down. All right, that one is all tightened down, 17 inches away from the frame. So now move to the other side. Tighten these down with some Loctite and then lose the jack and the safety post. Lower it back down, try to center it. Right now it's off keel it's off keel right now, so when we lower it, hopefully it'll go back on keel. All right, the job is finished, and it only took me nine hours. I got here at nine o'clock, and it's 8.45 right now. It's 20.45. Got the new beam in. It's on keel. Just about. Have to float it to get it perfect. Got the brake line reattached. Wheels are touching, bolts are torqued, holes are drilled. I tightened that one way too much. It deformed, the, but it's all done. 